is hard to believe our journey on the Blue Ridge Parkway is about to come to an end and it has been absolutely amazing. <laughs> amazing. It is kind of sad that we're like eight miles left and it's almost over. I'm staying on the path that I've chosen straight up. Come my way and I'll see you at the top. So we have been cruising the Blue Ridge Parkway for the last two weeks. Today is actually two weeks since we got on. Two weeks. Oh my gosh. This has yeah. been such a great trip and such an incredible, incredible highway driving experience, traveling experience. And God, I recommend this to anyone who travels, who, who <laughs> loves to drive, who loves to be on the road or I think exploring this country. Cause it's Um, so our personal journey. So we got on in Brevard, North Carolina, came up the um, a really nice twisty round uh, road to get up there. Yeah, we and provisioned in Brevard and came on up. Right. Uh, we met up with our friends, Jen and Dee's Neely, who she actually happens to work for us, but they also have a Travado and uh, they live in Asheville and Mount Pisgah has been one of their getaway campgrounds. So that's the first campground mm -hmm. on the Blue Ridge Parkway coming from the south, going north. Yep. And it's only because it's only 45 minutes from Asheville. It's very convenient and stuff but you are it is actually the highest campground on the Blue Ridge Parkway so and the campground is just below 5,000 feet um, and then you go up to the lodge it's there's actually several lodges if you're car camping and you want to stay in hotels and stuff there's old rustic lodges I think two or three two or three, 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 three of them along the parkway um, the lodge beautiful incredible vistas the campground just deep you know you're in the woods on the side of the ridge great Great place, beautiful. Yeah, signal was mostly black there. There are a few sites. If you go on the upper <laughs> oh, side, yeah. the higher side of the loops, you can get some Verizon and some AT and T. We had very to use, challenging. We had to use bonding there to get anything reliable. I've had just a great time hanging out with Jen and Dee's, doing some hiking around there. Some beautiful sites here where you can get some privacy and seclusion, and a lot of unlevel sites like at most of these campgrounds. <laughs> and showers. That's one of the ones that had showers. We weren't quite ready for showers yet. I took a shower. You there. did. But yeah, yeah uh, I would prefer the showers to be more spread out <laughs> along the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh, so next stop, uh, we had to host a webinar for our uh, members of the Mobile Internet Resource Center on during our time with Jen and Dee. So we could not get enough upload capacity at Mount Pisgah. So we all decided to return to their house in Asheville. We <laughs> down the hill. Down the hill we go. Um, <laughs> and uh, we stayed overnight with them, more hanging out. And she helped us with the webinar, of course. Yep. And um, got that a great would... use their home internet connection there. Yep. And took another little back road. I think it's the Elk Mountain Scenic um, Highway, which is just basically a little road up from Asheville back up to the Blue Ridge. We saw bears on the road as we That's climbed awesome. that. It was awesome. twisty, switchbacky. Um, and then we actually just continued, kept going up. We actually went before our next campground, we went to uh, Mount Mitchell, which is the highest point in the entire East Coast. So it's the, the, the peak of east of the Mississippi. Uh, is in North Carolina there, and just off the Blue Ridge Parkway. And you can drive up to most of it, and you only climb the very final summit, which is very steep and uphill. You're climbing the East Coast. The whole East Coast? Oh, the highest point in sure the eastern like half. Almost there. That's it. Right up there. Um, but, but beautiful. Great but views. Very beautiful. Uh, and then we went back down, and then we went to Crabtree Crab Falls, Falls, which is the next campground up the Blue Ridge Parkway. <laughs> uh, that campground is one of the older ones along the parkway. Has not been updated much at all. Um, the RV loop, they do, I think they said we had to stay in the RV loop on that one. I can't quite remember. A few sites that are really nice. Most of them are just little pull-offs. Uh, we happened to find one that was not, it was a reservable site, but it had not been reserved for two nights. So, so we, we snagged it for two nights because we found pretty good connectivity at this yes. location. Mm -hmm. And there's an amazing hike. It's very strenuous all the way down, 660 feet down uh, over a very short period to get to Crabtree Falls, which was spectacular. Definitely. This is the easy part. It's all downhill. It's all downhill on the way back too, right? It That's is? how physics works. Right. We're still going down, which means it's going to be a long way up. We made it. 
which means now we've got to make it back. And it's all up from here. Definitely worth the hike. Worth Thankfully, the, hike. the return trip, if you take the longer route, is uh, same elevation gain, but of done course. more gradually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a lot gentler. I'm glad we went up that way and down the other way. Um, but yeah, great stay. Uh, we got and we were able to get caught up on some work yeah. uh, there because we had the connectivity. Yes. Uh, enjoyed two nights there, except for that's where we had our generator neighbors. We had t happened to have two in a row: one of the contractor and the one who liked to run all day long. Nonstop. So it was. Yeah, yeah, that but, is the one thing you kind of run across on the Blue yeah. Ridge is generator it's, people. Especially when we're spoiled with our Travato and our uh, lithium Volta system that we can pretty much we recharge while we're underway through each of these stops. We arrive with a full battery and we can go two, yeah. three days without even worrying about it needing mm -hmm. to top off. And if yeah. you do, we just turn on the engine. It's nice and quiet and recharges. Um, so we're spoiled. <laughs> yeah, we're, so we're, we're very spoiled. spoiled. Yeah, we, we realize this. <laughs> All right, so uh, next stop up was, the... Um, um, with Linville, right? Linville Falls. So, yeah. yeah. So this this next one, which we thought was actually going to have connectivity, because there's the town of Linville Falls, and then there's the waterfall on the campground. But is this was as we pulled in, the host says you're stepping back into the 1950s. Yes, um, and our host happened to be one of our members of the of the MIA, and he asked if you figure out how to get it to work here, let me know because I'm stuck here until October <laughs> to <laughs> drive all the way into town. <laughs> Just to make a check my email and it was and i'm sorry michael we found nothing you're probably not going to see this video until november but um, <laughs> um you, we were that's the one place we were best we were able to do even with all of our gear all of our tricks was some textual email and text messaging it was very challenging and you tried you spent a good tried, three spent hours <laughs> trying everything we had in our our bag of tricks only thing we don't have on board is a, a Big high directional gain antenna on to, a mast because that's just too much to carry in the van <laughs> um but i don't think that would have ha mattered no. there actually. so we enjoyed it there. There's also more hall, uh, uh, falls to hike there. But and interestingly enough, there's no way to get from the campground to the visitor center where the trailheads are for the hikes. It's about a mile. Uh, there's no you trail. Got, You'd you probably be either walking, walking on the on. main road. We took the bikes over and no bike racks there. That was kind of annoying. Yeah, weird. It's like, hey, hey, National Park Service, put in a wood bike rack. That would be nice. But the falls are... are these, these are bigger, much bigger, more spectacular falls. But you don't get kind of that like close-up view like you got at uh, Crabtree. Here you get kind of an overlook. You know, it was, it was, it's a neat. Definitely check out Linville Falls. That was a much less strenuous hike to get to the first few points. So. Uh, Linville Falls campground itself, I wasn't overly impressed with it. A lot of these sites are very packed on top of each other. Yes. Not a lot of privacy. We got a decent one for the night. And we were there on a Friday evening, so it was extra that packed was the, in. Yeah, yeah, it was not still, even still, it was not full. But it was the fullest of any of the campgrounds we experienced. Now, during the week, it probably would have been just fine. Been it would have been fine for us. It, yeah. But it was it was great. It was a good stop. Uh, the next one up the road would have been Julian Price, which is one that was donated from the insurance company many years ago. And this is kind of a big playground of outdoor activities. So and it's, it's also very accessible from Boone, which is a popular place for people to go at now. So we're driving through. It's a Saturday at this point, <laughs> And we're just seeing more crowds than we have the entire Blue Ridge Parkway. That's this area around Boone and Grandfather Mountain was the only part of the parkway where there was actually, most of the time we were driving, we could not see another car for in miles, front of us miles. or behind us. And it just felt like we had the road to ourselves, except for this section. It was still beautiful and still pretty spread out, but it was like, okay, there's cars and the, the trailheads, cars were parked all, you know, all the spots were full. Some of the trailheads were completely full with people hiking. It's great to see people outdoors, but oh, yeah. that was the only part in the entire parkway where it felt crowded. So we decided to skip Julian Price because we already knew from multiple reports that there was no chance of connectivity there anyway. And it was Saturday evening. We just didn't want another crowded campground experience again. We instead called ahead to a Harvest host along the way in Laurel Springs, I Springs think. Hills, yep. Mountains, I don't know, Laurel something. Yep. Uh, it was Thistle Metal Winery. Amazing location. They usually, they only have allow one uh, Harvest host member a night there. And you amazingly, on a Saturday night, they had no one signed yeah. up. So we got it. Uh, and they had really good wine. And then you get to camp along a babbling brook um, right in their big, beautiful meadow. And score that is kind of like the picture postcard harvest toast experience it was beautiful and they had wi-fi at <laughs> the guest wi-fi and we could reach it with our external antenna yeah. to the van enough to stay online <laughs> and keep in, in touch um so that was great because they didn't have much other for cell phone signal there
Parkway. The next stop was Doton Park. I think this one was my absolute favorite of all the stops we made on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm. Uh, we, we, we scored, a, a, I think the, the RV side loop was is newer, so it's actually got slightly bigger spaces, more spread out and slightly more level. But it's confusing because you're coming in because the original campground loop is marked as for tents and vans, vans. and pops up. So that's what we pulled into and we get there and the ranger says, yeah, well, that's for uh, van agains from back in the 50s. Uh, you're actually considered an RV in this campground. You're going to want to go to the other and, side. And we're glad we did because we got the, probably one of the most beautiful single campsites we've ever had because it felt well, like, not ever. I think this might have been with the, the boulders and the rocks and it just felt like we were parked in a little landscape architect ad of you know not all the sites in this campground were like that but, but a lot of them were uh, awesome yeah, there were several were i would have been happy with uh several first come first serve this one was a reservable happened to be available for a couple nights so we snagged mm -hmm. it happened to be my birthday then so yes. it was great uh don't park has some great hiking trails you go down to some old cabins and see what life used to be like before the blue ridge parkway was built they preserved it it's really awesome yeah. There's some great uh, uh, ranger led uh, naturalist tours about it and, and about the plants around the area mm -hmm. which was really fascinating and you could hike the other direction up to um, the visitor center um, or the yeah the little visitor center which but there's also an old you know kind of a, a roadside cafe that had been open since the 1940s when the parkway came through this is like one of the, the, the few concessionaires on the parkway um, and it closed just like in the 90s, 90s I think, and then they, and it they just was restored and reopened. Yep, they just reopened it back in May. Um, they all the federal buildings at this point require masks everywhere, which so is great. So we felt safe, safe getting and they a have meal. separated tables, and they do have outdoor dining. But there was no, we got there right at opening, so was, uh, we're like hardly yeah. anyone there. So we yeah. enjoyed a birthday dinner there. Yes. The pecan encrusted trout. Uh -huh to die for amazing mm -hmm. um and the walk through the wildflowers mm -hmm. and i mean it's just just such a beautiful place and that's where we saw some really crazy at&t speeds yeah. you were able to get up above 200 megabit per yeah, second almost there. 300 upload speeds were phenomenal so we yeah. stayed there two nights got, got <laughs> up on some work Rocky Knob next up on the park. That's the one that was deserted. Yeah, yeah, we get there and the ranger is like, it's been busy all along until this week. And we it, get there and we basically had the whole campground to ourselves. This is a huge campground. It goes all the way down the hills. Not a lot of level sites. There's so like four level sites in the whole site. Although they do have a newer RV loop up top, which was actually had level sites, levelish, and was had space for bigger RVs. But we went down. He said, go down. There's some good sites down there. And we really did have this entire place to ourselves. It felt kind of weird. But Until this great. motorcycle camper decided to, camp, to take the spot, the spot right, right next, next to us in another van right next to us. And there are sites all over the camp. Yeah. I don't know why. There's 200 everyone... sites, and they picked right. three in a row. Okay, like, okay. Oh, whatever. Well. But the sites are big enough. It was yeah, it's not still an issue. Yeah, a neat place. Um, and that's actually where we hiked to the top of uh, Rocky Knob. A beautiful hike to the top with cows and wildflower and, and wild blackberries oh yes we found wild blackberries on our hike back and so yes yeah, some great hiking there and the next one up was peaks of otter mm -hmm. uh, we honestly got to this campground drove around couldn't really find sites that were level um a lot of these campgrounds it's little car parking sections that were meant for tent campers or small pop-ups or something and they're not angled the right way to back into so even if you find a level site it's like you can't get your rv turned around to back into it you either have to pull forward which isn't ideal in ours we like our back window in the yep. privacy because that's where our bed is um so it, it's really hard sometimes to find a level site that is back in. that is back in appropriate and in the rv loop mm -hmm. uh, so we turned the corner right around from the dump station on the trailer loop and there's the site t18 if you're going there right beyond the uh, dump station it is on its own it's, you can barely even see another site so even if, if the campground was it's full on a hillside with like just nature views all around you and, and we could uh, Oh, All throughout the rest of the campground, we couldn't get any signal. But at that yes. campsite, we were able to get online we with, need great speeds, yeah. I think it was AT&T. Yeah, it was, was AT&T again. 
Yep. And then uh, from there, there's several hikes, uh, really strenuous ones up the mountain. We did not do those because we were tired of hiking. <laughs> too, we had done too much hiking. Too much, too much, days. too much uh, but, uphill hiking. But we did that. Well, we and it ended up still being like 400 feet of elevation gain to go hike down to the lake and walk around the lake, which is this beautiful lake in a lodge. It's, it's flat. Another, another lodge. But yeah, but to get to it wasn't flat, but it's still, it was but good. still the lake was flat. Yes, we had a mile flat. of flat. <laughs> yes. This, this lake is named after Abbott, the, the landscape architect who designed the Blue Ridge Parkway. Total genius. So and, I, that yeah. was actually not a bad stop, but we almost uh, decided to skip this campground because we couldn't find level and signal. <laughs> um, but we, we scored with that site. Yeah. Then after Peaks of Otter is the final campground um, along the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is uh, Otter Creek. Yes. Now, you hear about all these otters, <laughs> and you would think, oh, are there otters at these places? No. Mm -hmm. uh, the otters actually, they're not sure exactly where the term otter came from. They think it might have been one of... There was an Indian word? For that meant the peaks of the mountains. Uh, they thought maybe there was otters at one point. Yeah, so, so we never mm -hmm. quite figured out the otter thing. But uh, Otter Creek is a, a small one along a creek. Um, it's, it's And we'd actually stayed there before. Yeah, it is the lowest campground on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, so it's only like 680 feet elevation. It's a little right, warm there. Yeah, it was, it's warm because you're lower down. It's right after the you know you basically come down to cross the the James River water gap where the James River punches through the mountains. Uh, you can go. There's a little visitor center there, and you can walk down and see some of the old canals that uh, actually George Washington surveyed himself, you know, way back in the day, um, and uh, hike through the trees and stuff. And you know, it, it was a, a pretty little stop. Yep. No, hardly any. Barely. There. We had to pull out every trick in our book, and, and we, we have, got a line. We streamed. We got Verizon to work there yeah. with a booster. With a booster. One yeah. of the rare places a cellular booster actually worked. Only with Verizon, and only yeah, yeah. No AT and T. This is the one place in the Parkway. Zero AT&T, no mm -hmm. matter what we did, but Verizon won. Yes, uh, so that's the end of the Lewis Parkway camping, and it is a recreational thing, and uh, it is art. Road it is as art. Beautiful. They say it's life changing. I don't know if my life has changed for it, but I'm, I'm certainly it's so mega chilled. It has been chilling. It's been a great escape. There's been there's there's summer happening in the rest of the country, and we have not needed air conditioning for weeks, basically. So if you get the opportunity, do the Blue Ridge Parkway. It is a unique thing that. Like the the Natchez Trace in Mississippi and yeah. Tennessee, and there's a, there's 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 a couple others, but this, this one is is very unique just because it was so uniquely the the, the cir circumstance of the depression of needing to do a big gigantic project like this was ne has never happened since really. So, Maybe it will. If we go yeah. into oh goodness, no, but... knock on wood. <laughs> but being yeah. able to have the land available and buy it up and and no com yeah. no billboards, no commercials, yeah. no it's, yeah. nice. no tolls. Yeah, it, and they need tolls. They, they need funding uh, yeah. to keep this up because it's not a fully funded national parks project. There is the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation, which is the official mm -hmm. nonprofit oh, yeah. support. Uh, we donated a dollar per mile. We donated four hundred sixty-nine dollars <laughs> yesterday before we got before getting off the parkway to help support the project. Uh, I definitely recommend doing that because that protects and keeps the maintenance going on and the heritage and makes us a gift that future generations can enjoy. And mm -hmm. that's what the national parks are all about. And we're about to go explore another one. This one dumps right into Shenandoah Parkway and doing the Skyline. Skyline Drive. So that's next up, up next. We create these videos just for fun and we love having you along for the ride. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, or if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.